Now, a moment or two ago, you saw Zietzi out and about on the banks of the Lataba River. There's no bringing him in. I tell you, it's going to be very hard to take him back home with us. He's going to have to do it kicking and screaming. I, on the other hand, am inside the Elephant Museum, not too far from where Zietzi is. Now, in here, you can see everything from an elephant's skeleton. You can see the jaws. You can see a stuffed elephant. You can see the heart. And then there's this mural right here next to me. Now, this mural depicts the various stages of growth for an elephant. So, Everything from the first year right up until an adult elephant. If you've ever wondered just how tall I am, let me take you through it. So this is a one-year-old elephant, and I'm proud to say I'm standing head above this elephant. And then there's the three-year-old elephant. And I tell you, when it comes to that, it, it starts to get a little bit downhill. And I'll show you why, because I'm only just about the height of this elephant. So it gets more heartbreaking after this, because a six-year-old elephant is much, much taller than I am. Look at this. Look at that. Okay, now an adult elephant can grow up to 3.5, up to 4 meters as well high, uh, shoulder height. So they don't measure the head, they measure the shoulder height. And you can see, I am here, jealous down. No, these elephants are huge. They're absolutely massive. But somebody else who's much taller than I am, but not quite as tall as an elephant, is Mr. Henny. Uh, Henny van der Kloof is the operations manager at Transfrontier Parks Destinations. Not quite as tall as the elephant, but tall enough, I'd say. Very good morning to you. Morning. Ayanda. Yeah, and again, um, welcome in Limpopo, and I think more specifically, welcome in the Great Limpopo Transfrontier Park. Let's talk a bit more about the Transfrontier Park now and the work that you do there. I know you work with communities and local accommodation areas. Just tell us specifically what it is that you do. Yeah, let me just um, make it clear start. Um, Transfrontier Parks Destinations is a private a private company, so we're not um, sand parks or whatever. Um, it's a private company. Um, the focus of the company is really to partner with communities to commercialize their tourism assets. Now, basically, what that means is we look for um, opportunities to work with communities who are owners of um, lodges, private lodges, and then we work with them. We see how we can take their assets and turn it into a successful business on their behalf. Henny, what was wrong with status quo or the way things were before that you saw a need to step into this arena, that you found a niche for yourself as a uh, business? Yeah, I think well, it's, it's, um, lo a lot of these lodges in the past has been operated by, by government departments, and obviously that's not their business. Their business is to fund these um, projects on behalf of communities but then to hand it over to a, um, a professional or, or a private operator to professionally run the lodge on their behalf or on behalf of a community mm -hmm. in that case. So what are some of the success stories that you can talk about since your intervention? Uh, perhaps tell us uh, about some, uh, some people who've managed to make a huge success or to grow their initiative with your help. Okay, yeah, well, we've, we operate a number of lodges in, uh, um, throughout the country, but I'm going to focus mainly on the ones in the Limpopo province, seeing that's where we are today. Um, the one I want to focus on is what we call African Ivory Root, which is a portfolio of about 10 different um, camps or lodges in the province, all community-owned lodges. Um, we took it over about just over two and a half years ago. At that point in time, five of the camps were actually not even operating. They were closed because of the state of the, of the camps. Uh, we've taken it over in the last two and a half years. We've managed to sort of almost push up the turnover of the, the lodges or the, um, by, or, by just about 200%. All the camps are operating and um, we're seeing a con constant growth in the, um, in the um, occupancies in the, in the camps. And obviously with that goes the, the benefits that, that flows to the communities as, as well. Well, um, outsourcing of, of, of things like um, laundry services, catering services, and, and, and so on. So that's, there's a spin-off to the community as well as, as part of just being the, the owners of the, the lodges. Mm. And, and talk to us also about your growth forecast and what plans you have in future. We've seen the success story that you've just talked about now. Uh, going forward, what can we expect? Well, we, we constantly, this um, government is on a continuous basis um, looking for opportunities where they would fund the building of, of new lodges for, for communities. Um, we're actually opening at, towards the end of this month, we'll be opening a new lodge called Avalani Eco Lodge, um, very close to Pafuri. So that's another lodge that's actually been sort of, was built just about three years ago, but hasn't operated to date. So that will be opening towards the end of the month. There will be another 50 odd new jobs created there. We're looking at another uh, um, lodge which will probably be open 
opening early next year. So it's this on, ongoing thing where these lodges, which used to be standing as sort of almost as white elephants, actually now be, being turned into operating, operating lodges. The other success story we've had is sort of um, Cow's Lodge, which is in the Halakhadi Transfrontier Park, that within almost just about five years, that lodge from being just a, 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 a vacant building has been turned into a fully operational five-star, or almost five-star lodge. Um, that lodge is now becoming profitable, and the communities, in that case, being the Kumani son and the Bushmen, are, are very happy people. The other success story is a lodge called Witsisuk Mountain Lodge, which we operate in the, in the Drakensberg. That lodge also being, being sort of probably months away from actually being shut down is now fully operational. We've t- in the process of totally revamping the, the, the lodge on behalf of the community. Very successful story. I love that there's the economic spin-off for the community members. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Henny van der Kolf is Operations Manager at Transfrontier Parks at Destinations. Thanks again uh, for your time and just uh, bringing us up to speed with regard to the work that he does on the ground. Public-private partnerships are key to the sustainability of the tourism industry. And I think it's a very important that engagement, robust engagement, carries on there. We heard from some of the officials a little bit earlier that they'll be engaging with the Minister of Home Affairs. Mr. Malusi Gigaba, with regard to the new legislation that was put forward on immigration laws, uh, uh, the spin off or the ripple effect on uh, travel and tourism has been felt by some of the operators uh, in the sector, and they say they will be engaging with the minister. Let's hope it will be a fruitful one uh, at that. Right now, it's back to you. In-